Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you. May the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who guided him towards the final victory, the Holy Spirit, may he enlighten your understanding because the devil has been blinding people's understanding. However, the Holy Spirit enlightens and makes us understand the Word of God, His Word. Because if you don't understand, then how can you practice it? How can you obey it? First, you have to understand, and then later on, you'll be able to practice it, isn't it? Very well. Pay attention, please. I'm going to try to draw it up for you so that you can comprehend the plan and the project that God has for your life, the life of all those who believe in Him. The Apostle Paul, led by the Holy Spirit, said like this, The first man, Adam, became a living being. Adam became a living being. God made Adam a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit, which means the first man, Adam, was a living being, and from this living being, just like Eve, mankind was born, human being was born, as well as the animals that were made living beings. The animals received a soul, the breath of life, the animals as well, the rhinos, the elephant, all animals, your little dog, they are all living beings. This is very nice. Now, when Jesus came, he was made a life-giving spirit. How did Jesus come? Jesus came through the work of the Holy Spirit. Adam and Eve were made after God's own image, but still living beings. But when Jesus came, he was born of the Holy Spirit. He was born, grew up, and at the age of 30, then he was baptized in water, he received the Holy Spirit, and that was it. From then on, he became a life-giving spirit, which means a spirit that gives life. He generated me when he made me a new person, when he came upon me. So he made me become a child of God and gave me the right to become a child of God. So when you see the great work of the Universal Church, for example, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's exclusively His work, of course, through people. Even though these people are full of failures, like myself, but He is capable to do something extraordinarily great. So, when the person is born of the Holy Spirit, they become children of God. They have the power to become God's children. And more, they have the right to be spirit that give life, life-giving spirit. So you who are watching me right now, and you live a tasteless, bitter, sad life, a sad life, it's because you are not born of the Holy Spirit. That's it. And there are no doctors, medication, there is no money, there is no wealth, there is no success, there is absolutely nothing this world can do in order for you to become a child of God. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. And that's the reason why we have the campaign of God's children. This campaign of Israel is for those who want to become God's children. 
So it's not for you to conquer money. I want to conquer a house, marriage. I want to resolve my personal problems. It's not for you to have good health. No. This campaign of Israel, it's exclusively, exclusively to generate new children for God. And you can be one of them. Because the day that you stop being a living being to become a life-giving spirit, the most empowered person on the face of the earth, more empowered than any king, any president or governor, any mayor, owner of big companies, richer than anybody in this world because they become children of God. It's not child of a great millionaire, a multimillionaire, but a child of the Most High, of the Creator. The Creator who is so good. He, he's a Father. He doesn't live up there and we are down here forsaken. No, He becomes. He makes your body when you are a life-giving Spirit, when you are born of the Spirit, when you receive the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Creator, the Creator Himself, makes His dwelling place inside of you. And then nothing becomes impossible for you. That's why Jesus said, everything is possible. Everything is possible, including for the person to have a new life, which is what many people watching us desire. You who are watching me now, that have a dream that you perhaps never said to anybody. You have a dream of, oh, what I wish, ah, how, how I wish if I could, I would start everything all over again. If I, if I could be born again, I wouldn't do the wrong mistakes I've done my entire life. Or if God would give me a chance to start from zero. That's exactly what the Holy Spirit does when He comes upon us. He makes you a new person. A new person is not a fixed person. It's someone new, new, a new mind, a new heart. This is what it means to be a life-giving spirit. So, I want to tell you, my friends, that since the day in which I was born of God, look, all my inferiority complexes, Think, evaluate, check. That's it. Because the mind of the Lord Jesus is a brilliant mind, a glorious mind. It makes possible all sorts of impossible things because the person becomes new. My dear Esther, my wife, my companion, I love her. I really love her, truly do. However, I don't depend on her. I don't. If she dies, I won't be knocked off my feet. I will continue being a life-giving spirit. And the same thing in regards to her. If I die, she won't be depressed.